Hi, welcome to class two in the MSA Servitization module, based around why manufacturers are moving into services. First of all, feedback, um, only two groups, which will be cool. Now, what do we want to learn from this? I want to explain the razor razor blade model and understand why it can be risky. The transformation processes from shift, shifting to services, challenges in product-based firm, and then the major risks associated with servitization strategy. You're going to learn about more about change management here of firms. Watch the video from Xerox. Really good. Razor razor blade. I think everybody's pretty au okay fait with it. Um, Apple has a interesting model of uh, make money on both sides with the product and the services. Um, option two, HP, money on the services. Think about your printer. How much does that ink cost? Um, HP, um, you need to learn we're not that silly and we know how to get refills on these things that cost a fraction of the uh, fee that you're charging. Procter & Gamble have a more balanced model. Um, going back to the razor and the razor blade, um, just look at the pricing next time you go shopping and tell me what you think about it and how it extracts value. Uh, you could also have a look at the um, Nespresso machines. Um, very, very clear model of razor, razor blade model. Think about it in industrial context. Um, the HP model here, um, that's common with a lot of capital assets that we sell. Capital equipment is very similar. Sell at almost zero or sometimes negative margin. But think about that. What's the risk of selling it at zero or below zero, below cost, just to get it into the market? Well, we have to try and keep capturing value for the whole of the operational life of that machine. When I change my razor handle, I do that once every 15 years. And then for the next 15 years, they're trying to um, take advantage of that handle and stick on new blades. Think about me and HP. Um, I bought a printer. Um, and I'm very pleased and proud to say I do not use HP ink. So they sold me a printer probably at zero margin or negative margin, and they're not capturing any money. And I'm very proud of that fact. Think how that works and what the risks are for an industrial firm. This is what most of the industrial firms have. Think about how they make their money and where they make their money. Think about your car, how much do individual parts cost? How much did the car cost? Why is the disparity there? How do we capture customer value? How do we keep customers there? What's the expectations of risk? Apple model works really well, but I don't think there's many industrials that could actually manage that. Apple know how to skim money off people in many, many places. They understand the ecosystem they're operating in, and they control and manage it very well, um, even though they don't provide all of the stuff that you use. So look at that model, very, very good model. So I'm gonna use some stuff from Cambridge, really, really cool. Um, I recommend that you go and download this paper. I've given you the link, seven critical success factors. I want you to do this in class but I want you to be able to be comfortable to use it. Assess your market and its internal readiness. Create the right strategic and cultural context. Can't just happen. You don't just say, oh, now we're gonna do services. It doesn't work like that. Build structures and governance for services. How do we govern services? How do we build them? Get the resources ready for service innovation and delivery. It's not easy. It's a change in mentality. It's a change in culture and actually how you do that. Proactively manage and engage and trust. Trust is the most important thing here when we work together. If they don't trust you, they won't invite you back. Um, develop and embed service processes. Services are processes, so you better embed them in your firm. Um, don't let the equipment guys tell you what services you need. You need to have services which actually work for service. So if those processes don't work for service, kill them, simplify them. Um, they may work very well for new products where risk profile is completely different. Continually optimize your services and communicate what's best practice are within the firm. So what I want you to do, um, take, a, take a firm, 
I've got Bubs here, I've got um, uh, Rolls Royce. Go and find a firm, perhaps one that you work for, and go through those questions. So now I'm going to talk about the servitization strategy risks. So now you presented. What did you learn? How did you learn? Do you know you know most of the risks already? Many of the risks are clear. So review it and then the theory. Score all of the firms. Share, close. So you've had a look at some firms. We've had a look at some razor, razor blade models. We've understood the process of shifting to services. And I do recommend that you go and have a look at that book from um, Andy Newell's group in Cambridge. And you've had a look at the major risks of the strategy. Thanks very much.